Welcome to seminary. You made it. I'm proud of you for being here. Hope you feel welcome and happy to be here today. Oh, Kaylee, there you are. Come up here. You snuck in while my back was turned. I already made the assignments for you. So you're not welcome yet. You're not welcome here in seminary yet. I didn't do that. Okay. No, you're not welcome. Until she welcomes us. Okay. Um, Joe's mostly done. It's Brett. Music chair is Greg. Jake is giving opening prayer. Jacob B is in doctoral ministry. And Greg is in personal chair. And closing prayer is Jared. And then reminders, mark it, answer it, and share it. Journal, what makes me feel sad? And stuff happening. Okay, right? It's Tuesday. Okay, nothing Tuesday. Wednesday, Matt Club, 6 to 7.30. And then no school, Thursday and Friday. Thanks, Kayla. Yeah. Anything to put on the board for today? That's not already up there. Okay, cool. So, Grant, introduce the song. Oh, thank you, Anderson, for helping out today. Is the door locked? I'm going to go grab that, and then thanks for, he picked up the trash for us today, too. Okay, song. Um, so this is God's Country by Blake Sheldon, and... Uh, being like born and raised in Missouri, it's like this is kind of like the music you know that everyone listens to is like country, and all countries either about like God, alcohol, or girls. So no, there's trucks too. Dogs and trucks. trucks. <laughs> so uh, this qualifies as one of the ones about God. So uh, yeah. What do you like about this song? What what can we get from this? Um, it does have a good spiritual message, even though it's more like not like for our church specifically it's just a christian like song but uh i don't know it just talks about a variety of different things so okay while we're listening to this uh answer this question did you find any announcements amina um
Father, I'm so grateful we're all here today in seminary, and um, please, please bless Brother Jones for preparing these lessons and uh, for giving us his time and his effort. And uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity that you've been given this day to share the gospel to others and be with each other. And I say same for me, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Any uh, follow up on the Book of Mormon? To um, give it away to Emma. She hasn't had a chemist school all week yet, so. Oh, wait. Okay. Gives you, gives you, so it gives you a chance to mark maybe the scriptures in there for you. Yeah. Well, no, no, I already, I already gave her the book of Mormon. Oh. She just, she hasn't came to school this week. Oh, the chat was there about it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. 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 That's right. That same day. Yeah. She's at home reading it. Yeah, she can't do anything. She can't put it down. School, no. Book of Mormon, yes. Bar. I chose um, Isaiah five twenty. Back on this one. We're hitting this one like. Every week. Did we do this one yesterday? No, not yesterday. Mm. Bring it. Okay. Can I wonder if anybody before they look it up knows what Isaiah five twenty is about? Isn't it like good to evil evil? Uh huh. You hadn't been looked at it just now. Mm. Well done. It's He's like, no, I was on my messages. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on. That's it. Go. Both of them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Um, so what I think about this is people may have like different standards of you and like think things are better than like they actually are. So just careful in the world. Mm -hmm. Leave it there. Lot to say about that. All right, so recently uh, Todd has a friend that uh, was like in a relationship with this guy and, uh, and then like she told him that she didn't want to like be in a relationship with him and then he started like acting really creepy and like stalking her and making threats on her life and stuff. And so my parents offered to let her stay with us for a little bit until that like cooled down. And so um, it's just been not weird per se, but like different having someone live in your house who's like you're not like really familiar with. Uh, so it was just kind of like making me think about like how we act different now because she's here. There's less fighting and stuff because we're oh. like. I have to get, like make it look like we're we got this put together here. Yeah, you know? like she's staying with us. Yeah. We're supposed to be the family that yeah. can help her out. <laughs> and uh, 
And so it's just kind of made me think about like, um, like if we had God living with us, how would we act? Like mm -hmm. it would be even even more so like that. You're like clean everything and like make it look perfect and stuff. And it's just been I don't know, kind of eye opening because I'm like uh, I don't know. It's just always kind of like made me feel bad that like we treat our family the worst out of oh. everyone. Yeah. Like. Because every time we would fight when I was younger, my mom would be like, "Did you treat someone at school like this?" And like, I'm like, "No." I'm like, "Are you treating your sibling like this?" And I was like, "Cause they stole something of mine or something." But like, I don't know. It's just uh, interesting. So I don't know. It's just helped me realize that we need to act better all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are truth right there. Kind of agree with what he's saying. Why do we? Sometimes we give, we tend to give our love to God, but we give our frustrations to the people closest to us when it should be the other way around. We give all of our problems and our frustrations to God and give our love to everybody around us. At the end of the day, it's like God probably is going to be really lenient with us when it comes to getting him right you know which church and like who is god and but he's going to be a lot less lenient on how we loved each other because no matter what god you believe in that god says treat each other well yeah yeah it's kind of too bad right why do we why do we do that can you think can you think of why why would that be we tend to be Maybe not our best selves when we're at home, maybe with parents or siblings. Yeah. Because we know that, like, they'll really love us either way. Oh, we can take it and for we granted? Kind of just, like, yeah, oh. fall back on that. They have to love me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's good thinking right there. That's honest. Anybody else have a thought about that? Why is it that way? Do you feel that way? Do you feel like you give your best at home? Maybe we should all have a stranger come and live with us, yeah. It's true. We, we behave differently when we think other people are watching because we're, we're worried about our reputations. And not even like fighting and stuff, just like little things like, I don't know, like, it, like you clear the, the plate, your plate out. Your manners. More and you're yeah. Kind of like, like not going around burping and stuff. Uh huh. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Thanks for that. It's a great reminder. Uh, okay, that song, I'm enjoying some of the songs you guys bring in. It's like I haven't heard these songs, and there's some good stuff in there. There's some good truth in there. It, it doesn't, it's not to say that you can only find truth and uplifting content only in the church. You know, people are generally good. Uh, there's a reason we have artists. They can help us see things differently sometimes. So that's pretty cool actually i think the 40 he's like sitting in the back of a 40 i think that 40 is like a 40 pint probably alcohol i'm guessing is what he's talking about there like he's sitting in he's been drinking all night he's sitting and seeing the sunrise the dogs are running and he sees and that's when he figures out no like i need something different i need something better because i think a 40 is is referring to alcohol that's 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 my guess so sometimes you have to experience the bad to know that that's not the way, that's not the answer. What you think is gonna make you happy is not the thing. I've been asking you the question, why do we sin? What, it's like, it's like a disorder. It's like we know it's not, what makes us think it's gonna work? But every single time we do, we think that's the thing that's gonna work, but it doesn't. Why? Don't answer that yet. We'll get to that in a minute. But really want it we got to unpackage that it'll make us more powerful against error we can understand why we make the mistakes we do what's driving it what's driving that car anything else to bring up anybody go trick-or-treating last night yeah is it fun Let's dress up yeah some didn't you know it was a few years ago when i had I had little kids, 
and it was like snowy outside in Salt Lake City and it was like kind of miserable conditions for trick-or-treating but the kids are just so determined and they're so excited about it and so you put on a coat and gloves and you go shuffling through the snow door to door and I had been going to uh, Liberia quite a bit at that at that time and I'd seen a lot of really sad stuff so sad I've seen suffering of children that you only see on television. Uh, it's heartbreaking. And we were trick-or-treating. And I just got, like, I started crying. It's like, because I had a bad attitude about it. I was like, oh, the commercialization, you have to go buy a bunch of candy, all these expensive costumes. You know, it's like, candy's like poison anyway. Why are we even doing this? You know, teaching our children to go door to door begging for stuff. This isn't it. This isn't right. <laughs> This was my attitude, but I'm doing it anyway because it's a cultural thing. And, um, and then I had a total switch, switch, flip switched in my brain. And I was like, no, this is different from how I've been seeing it. Look what's happening here. Like we teach kids 364 days a year about stranger danger, right? You don't go talking to people you don't know. You definitely don't go knocking on people's doors you don't know. You don't go asking for candy from strangers. Do not do that, <laughs> ever. <laughs> don't take candy from people you don't know. And then one day a year, we're like, let's do all the wrong things. Let's go knock on all the doors of the strangers and ask for candy. <laughs> and if they want help with their puppy, we'll probably help them with it. So, um, and I was like, wow, this is really amazing. Look what's happening. This entire community is just going out of their way to show a bunch of kids that we like them. We like kids. We, we want to help them be happy. And somehow kids think candy is happiness. And so we give them candy. And they dress up and they make believe. And they, they get to put on their imagination for a little while. And how awesome that we get to live in a place that's peaceful, where you can trust that you can go knock on people's doors and they're going to be kind to you and smile at you. And it just helps kids feel like they're in a safer place. And, and everybody's so kind. And it just, and last night I felt that same thing, taking Sicilian and Sunday around the, the Fullerton school area. And people just get so into it. And I thought, how amazing. There's like, this is a good world. They're like, they're good people. And it's good to help children to feel safe and happy. How awesome. Even if you have to give them candy to do that. <laughs> so I just wanted to comment on that. You know, it's actually pretty, pretty cool. Um, okay, anything you want to bring up? Any good news? Any challenges? Any things you've learned or thoughts you've had about past discussions that we've had that are like, oh, light went on? Anything? Not that you have to, but you know, this is a place of discussion. It's not just me lecturing, I hope. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you to put on your thinking brains, and we're going to keep unpackaging this Psalm 23 thing. Um, I asked you some questions yesterday. And see, I don't know if you don't know, or I don't know if you know, and you are not sure, and so you don't want to share, I don't know if you don't know, and you don't know, and then therefore you can't, I don't know. So we're going to go through a few things today, and I hope you're thinking about this, because when we're talking about he restores my soul, right, the good shepherd restoreth my soul. And I was thinking, you know, maybe, maybe you guys' lives aren't as tough as the, they may yet be. And it's hard to realize that you need a doctor if you don't think you're sick. You don't go to the doctor if you're not sick. You don't just show up and be like, hey, what's up? No, it costs money to go to the doctor. You have to go out of your way. So if we don't think we have a need for Jesus, then we won't go looking for him, will we? And if everything's just fine, if it's fine enough, or if we can manage to ignore what isn't fine well enough, then we think, I don't need Jesus. I've got what I need. What do I need him for? 
uh, I know a fair number of people, people I've been really close to, who end up jumping off the old ship Zion because they don't see a need to be in that boat. I have enough money. I have people. I have health. I've got all the material things that I really need or mostly want. What? Why do I need God? If we don't know why, we're not going to stick around because it's a lot of work to be in the church. It takes, you know, it's like signing up for 10% of your income over the lifetime. That's like, I don't know, that's uh, tens of thousands of dollars you could do something with. So there's that. And there's a lot of your time. It's a whole lifestyle. And so if you don't see a need for it, then why are you going to do it? Why are you going to go to the trouble? And that's what we're talking about here. I'm trying to show you that Jesus is the answer to the problems that you face. So over here, the good shepherd restores my cast soul. I and those I love are now or will be cast by, how do we get cast down? Go with me down this list here. Sin is number one. We spent a day talking about the big picture of how we are powers over sin and death. Those are the two problems we face that we can't solve on our own. We could pretend, we could uh, procrastinate, we could, um, you know, dissociate, and we could pretend like those things don't matter. But they do. <laughs> so, ignoring and acting against what I know is right, regret. Have you felt regret? Has it bothered you to the point when you actually want to do something about it? Or do we get pretty good at living with regret? <laughs> I'm, I'm good with guilt. Yeah, I can carry that around. I can pack it way down inside. I don't really need to listen to it. But at some point, maybe you start to care about feeling good from the inside out, getting your conscience clear so you can sleep at night. Self-loathing, right? I don't like myself. Sin, I've done things I regret. Self-loathing, I am a regret. I am bad. I'm a mistake. I'm worthless. Emotional pain. We get cast down with deep sadness, disappointment, loneliness, deep grief, hopelessness. Maybe you haven't experienced this, but if you haven't, you likely will, or somebody very close to you will, and it will be your job to help them. Problem is, you might not be able to help them. Try as you may. Love as you might. It is bigger than you to solve somebody else's deep emotional pain. The body mechanical, uh, body mechanical malfunctions and physical pain. Has anybody been in extreme physical pain before? Like, a lot of pain. Yeah, you experience that regularly, right? Yeah, chronic pain. It's the worst. It's, you can't, I mean, you can't really focus on anything. You can't do much of anything when you're in a lot of pain. It's hard to feel the spirit. It's hard to give service. It's hard to be happy. All right, so that's, there, that's being cast down. Sickness, physical sicknesses like cancer or other major, major illnesses. If you know people who have gone through this and seen their body just stop working or have big problems, what are you going to You can't solve that. They can't solve that. Okay, cognitive malfunctions in the brain like anxiety, trauma, dementia, PTSD. That's being cast down. That's bigger than you can just choose your way out of. Just choose your way out and solve that problem. You can't just bootstrap your way to solving all that. That's bigger than what, what we can handle sometimes on our own. Chemical malfunctions in the brain, like depression, self-harm, addictions. I don't know if you've known somebody with a major addiction, but they can't really solve that problem easily. Might have been able to be avoided, 
But addiction is just a response to human suffering. That's all it is. It's, it's dealing with something so deep and so big and so heavy that the only way is to try to numb out and get away from it. And then life challenges, right? Decisions, financial problems, work, relationships. Oh my goodness. Things fall apart. Some of you have seen those things happen in your own families. I hope you haven't, but some of you have experienced bigger problems like that than you can solve. So then how does Christ restore us? I asked you yesterday, how does it happen? How does he do that? And what I would rather is not write any of this in the board and have you give me this to your, on your own. But there's just not a lot of time to just, we could spend like a week coming up with the list, you giving it to me and I writing it on the board, right? So what does Christ do with sin? Can you think of experiences in the scriptures? Think of stories that you've heard or read. How does Jesus, our good shepherd, deal with sin? He replaces guilt. Can you think of a story or two or three? That's a really good example of that. That uh, reminds me of uh, when he's talking to the woman who's caught in adultery. And he says, you should go and sin no more. Okay. So, did that make her feel better? What did he say before that? Can you find that? I don't remember. Try to find that story. Because there's something before the go and sin no more part. That's, that's the second, that's part B. Isn't there a story about like Lot's wife? Okay. Is something like that too? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, search it up if you can think of a story. Any others that are coming to mind? When guilt was taken away. James? I'm really young, but she didn't really have guilt. <laughs> Let's go there. End of Mosiah. Look it up. These are important, powerful stories. Okay, while you're looking up those three stories, Lot's wife, I'm not sure what that one, she ended up. Wait, but there's like. Yeah, go ahead and search for it. Okay, while you're looking those up, what about replacing shame? Fixing the, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, and people just don't like me. <laughs> what does Jesus do about that? And I'm not talking about generally for everybody, I'm talking about you. Because he's your shepherd and you are his sheep. Let's not generalize it to the whole world. You. Yeah, you. And you. Okay, did you find any of those examples yet? James? Um, you there yet? Okay. That's going to be the Book of Mormon, right? Uh, it's also in Alma 36, I think. Yeah, Alma 36, James. Did you find yours, Holly? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Would you? Yeah, tell us. So we're talking about... Um, Okay, go ahead. Uh, so I'll just read the verse where it talks about that. And it's John chapter 8, verse 11. Uh, and the lady was talking about it. Because so she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said, Wait, go, go back a little oh, bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, let's get more of that story. Uh, verse 10 is, When Jesus had lifted himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Go and send them out. Okay. So, can you imagine the setting for this story? A woman caught in adultery. <laughs> okay. Awkward. 
But that's cause for what? If you commit adultery, what happens to you in the Jewish law? You get stoned. You, yeah, yeah. You don't just like get high. Yeah. You get killed. <laughs> <laughs> You get no. killed. I, I mean, like, stoned. Right. Uh, not like, not like, stoned. <laughs> well, that took a second to sink in. Yeah. <laughs> so, but somebody might choose to go get stoned in that case. It's like, my life is so That's bad, fair. I guess the only thing I can do is go check out, numb out. i got to run away from this psychologically because I can't bear it. All right. Can you imagine, first of all, dying by people throwing rocks at you? To the point that you that you die worse can you imagine throwing rocks at a person until they die and you even fathom that Especially like who would do that what kind of <laughs> and this was the law this is the law of moses this is god's law oh my goodness he was very serious about showing in a temporal way a physical way in the real world, what is happening spiritually. You die spiritually, you die physically. I'm serious about it. He's very serious about teaching his people very clearly, so there's no misunderstanding. And it's really harsh. But, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. A lot but of motivation. Be, but then they would be like, you can have a right finger on his ear and say, it's like love. Which well, that... That is what the law of Moses was about. That, I mean, he wanted to give them the higher law. He gave them the higher law, the law of love. They had it, and they couldn't manage it. They were too spiritually dumb. They couldn't live it. They couldn't choose it because there weren't real consequences. There were spiritual consequences. It's just all inside my head, you know? So he's like, no, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're going we're gonna to make it really simple for you. Okay. Can you imagine, again, the fear that she felt? She's there on the ground. People have got their rocks. And he is like a rabbi. He's the one that's supposed to be tossing rocks also. So he does something very courageous and puts it to everybody else, right? Who, who's guilty here? Who isn't guilty? Let you throw your first stone, yeah? So you said, like, the stoning people is part of God's law. So does that mean if Jesus did do it, it wouldn't be considered a sin? No, not at all. It was the law. No, he, he did all kinds of things that were against the rules, the religious rules of the day. It'd be like Jesus going and, I don't know, drinking a bottle of beer or something for us. We'd be like, what are you doing? This is the, these are the rules. This is the law. What are you... You're not part of us, okay? You got it wrong. You're a rebel. And so he came to teach them a higher law, a new way, doing away with all the old way and giving them a higher way of thinking and being. Yeah. Is that why a lot of people didn't like him? That's why they hated him, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that he was disrupting the entire religion. Yeah, he was a total rebel. He was a social, like, activist. Yeah, Spiritual. Does this sound bad? No, this is what, in the context of Jesus' life at the time, yes. He was going way against the grain. Had a big job. So can you imagine her fear? And then, the, then what he says, he says, who are thine, thine accusers? Who's accusing you? Nobody's here. And then he gives the powerful answer that I don't condemn you. Doesn't mean I forgive you. It means I don't condemn you. Meaning you can turn it around, lady. You can fix this. You're not permanently broken. You can come back even from this. Yeah. Well, I mean, so before he made that rule, then like he would... Wait, like, he, he made the rule. What do you mean? I mean, before he was like... Law you know, Moses? You, like you can come back after you sin. Oh. Because before... They probably didn't even like believe in repentance because if you sin, then you get killed. So there's no chance for you to come back. They believe, but there were different degrees of sin, just like there are now, right? So, so yeah, some sins you can be killed for it. So she wouldn't have like even gotten the chance to like come back from it because she would have just died. 
Right, well, they, they, right. Yeah, she would have been dead. That, she, that would have cost her her life, that sin. So, what, so, I mean, he's only, like, one guy. Uh -huh. So, how did he, like, like change the entire... Because he's a genius. That's how. Because that was his mission. Why don't they just stone both of them? Huh? Why don't they just stone both of them? If they hated Jesus already. They, they tried to. Him. They wanted to. They wanted to kill him multiple times. They just couldn't find the right way to do it without getting themselves in trouble because they couldn't find the things that he'd really done wrong. He ate corn in a field. He picked an ear of corn on a Sunday. And so did his disciples. What a rebel. So go to the store on Sunday. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there was repentance. You had to bring a turtle dove or an unblemished lamb. Or if it's a really big sin, a big bowl, and they're going to slit its throat, and they're going to burn its flesh, and they're going to eat it, and they're going to send smoke up to heaven. They've got all these rituals they did, and that was part of repentance in the law, in the old law. Did you know that? Yeah. That sounds like a party. A freaking barbecue. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. If you were one of the Levites, and you lived off of the, the sacrifice of the animals. Do you live off of that? So you live off other people's sins? You don't no, no, you get to, that, that's how they're sustained. They don't work. They work in the temple. That's their job. So not everybody can just eat it. Yeah, it's not a public thing. It's, can you imagine, though, how sad that is, too, like every time? Have you ever slid an animal's throat? Yeah, it's not fun. You might enjoy it. Okay, but what, what's the point here? Um, okay. So thank you for that. He didn't condemn her. He gave her a way out. James? Um, which verse do you want me to read? Well, I think that, um, let's go 17, let's go 16 through 21. 16 to 21, we're in Alma 36, 16 to 21. And now for three days and for three nights, I was racked, even with the pains of a man's soul. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Okay, so pause. So he felt guilt. The kind of guilt that's going to undo a person. He would rather, he wished he could go extinct rather than face God in his sinful state. All right? So, talking about guilt, yes, absolutely. Harrowed up by his sins. And then he thought of, in his, his, his dark spiritual state, thought of Jesus, who somebody told him about. He heard about him from his parents. And then he thought about that Jesus. Now, as my mind caught hold on this thought, I cried within my heart, O oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me. Who am in the gall of this bitterness, and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy and what marvelous sight I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again, I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. Okay, you get the point? He didn't just take away his guilt. He replaced it with what? Joy, exactly. So, how does he do that? All right, did you find the one about Lot's wife? Yeah, it was just like the pillar of salt and like, there's a talk on it, but mm -hmm. we'll probably do it right now. No, like, it's too late, but maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Think about that for tomorrow, okay? All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your input. We didn't even finish it. But I appreciate what you had to say. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Did we not say amen anymore? I said amen. Non de la quest. Where are you? There you are.
Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day and that we could all be here at Sound Lane. Just so we could have a good rest for day at school. Just so we could have a safe walk back to high school in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.